Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good day, viewers. You are welcome to another daily devotion of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Please, I would like you to invite every member of your family as you partake in today's devotional. Please close your eyes and let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you, Lord, for waking us up again this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the miracle of sleeping and waking up. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of life. Pray this morning, Lord, that you will speak your mind to us, cause your word to guide and direct our path. We pray, oh God, that your death on the cross of Calvary will not be in vain in our lives. Thank you, blessed God, for your faithfulness. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Today is Friday, 4th September 2020. And the topic before us is wounded for your sake. Wounded for your sake. Our text is taken from the book of prophet Zechariah, chapter 12. We read from verse 1 through to 14. Zechariah, chapter 12, from verse 1. Wounded for your sake. And I read. The burden of the word of the Lord against Israel. Thus says the Lord, who stretches out the heavens, lays the foundation of the earth, and forms the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples. When they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem, and it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces. Though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. In that day, says the Lord, I will strike every horse with confusion and its rider with madness. I will open my eyes on the house of Judah and will strike every horse of the peoples with blindness. And the governors of Judah shall say in their hearts, The inhabitants of Jerusalem are my strength, and the Lord of hosts their God. In that day I will make the governors of Judah like a fire pan in the wood pie. And like a fairy torch in the shelves, they shall devour all the surrounding peoples on the right hand and on the left. But Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in our own place, Jerusalem. The Lord will save the tents of Judah first, so that the glory of the house of David and glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall not become greater than that of Judah. In that day, the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The one who is feeble among them in that day shall be like David, and the house of David shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord before them. It shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me, whom they pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son, and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn. In that day, there shall be a great money in Jerusalem, like the morning at Hadad, Riman in the plain of Megiddo. And the land shall mourn every family by itself, the family of the house of David by itself, and their wives by themselves, the family of the house of Nathan by itself, and their wives by themselves, the family of the house of Levi by itself, and their wives by themselves, the family of Shimei by itself, and their wives by themselves, all the families that remain, every family by itself, and their wives by themselves. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. People of God, wounded for your sake is the topic of our discussion this morning. And we could see that the book of Zechariah centers on the coming Messiah. The coming Messiah that has been foretold severally, especially by the prophets. And the entire book of Zechariah is centered on this coming Messiah. And not only that, on the suffering that will precede his coming, there will be suffering and the man will also come. The same thing we see in the book of prophet Isaiah. And I would like to read Isaiah chapter 53, simply from verse 3 to 5. Isaiah 53, I read from verse 3 to 5. This coming Messiah is despised and rejected by men. He's a man of sorrows and acquitted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely... He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. That is the coming Messiah described by prophet Isaiah, and also going back to our, our book, Zechariah, we see from verse 10 to 14, the suffering of this Messiah, what this Messiah went through, and the money for the pierced Messiah, the money that took place when this man was bruised, when this Messiah was wounded, when this Messiah was pierced, the money that, that follows. But today we want to look at what should be our response. What should we do when this man has passed through all these struggles, all these stress, all these sufferings? For my sake and for your sake, what should be my response? What should be your response? Permit me today that today our response should not be to mourn again. Our response should not be to start weeping, to start weeping, to start crying that Jesus Christ was bruised for my sake. Our response should not be to start running on the ground, on the floor, and start condemning you who killed Jesus. Our response should be to repent and follow the love of Christ for our sake. To respond in repentance. And also, our, 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 our attitude should be that of acknowledging the love of Christ for me. The death that he died for me. To acknowledge his love. To acknowledge his grace and to forsake all my evil ways to come to him in repentance many of us today even little did we know that jesus was without sin but because of me because of you he became sin he was wounded for my sin he was wounded for your sin he was pierced for my sin he was chastised for your sin and the bible says because of these he now said, I am made oh by stripes, I am eat. And I want us to know that what Jesus expects from us in a time like this is to come to him with art of repentance, with an attitude of acknowledging that which he has done on the cross of Calvary for my sake. And we can see that the challenges, the struggles, the fears about future has been laid on the cross by Jesus. And that's why on the cross of Calvary, Jesus said, it is finished. In other words, he has taken my pains away. He has taken my sorrows away. He has dealt with my struggle on the cross of Calvary. He has given me his life. He has taken away my pain. He has taken away my wretched life. He has given me the life of peace, the life of comfort. The life of God has been exchanged with that of my own corrupt life. And Jesus expects me to repent, to respond in repentance and follow him day by day and do his will for my, for my life and follow the pattern laid for me by the scriptures. That is what God expects for me in a time like this. He has done his own and he expects me to do my own. And what God expects for me in a time like this is to serve him 
And that's why the Bible says in the book of Revelation, it says, I stand at the door. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, knocking. Jesus, in a time like this, expects me to open the door of my heart unto him and to forsake my evil ways, to forsake any lies. We are living in a time whereby lies has become the order of the day. People can do anything, anytime, anyhow, without minding the Spirit of God living in them. But God expects us to forsake our evil ways. We are living in a time when evil has perpetrated the art of many. Many are being guided, many are being ruled by the spirits of the devil. Many are being controlled by the power of evil in their lives. But because Jesus has taken this pain upon himself, he expects me to forsake my evil ways. He expects me to get sin. Anything that will hinder me from following the path of righteousness. In your office, do you still have the fear of God? In your place of work, do you still know that Jesus has died for you? Do you still acknowledge the fact that he became sin for your sake and he expects you to start living for him? As a man in that house, are you, are you doing what God expects you to do as the husband to your wife? As the father to your children? Do you take care of your children or you send them to go about begging? Don't forget, you'll be held responsible. God has given you that child. Do you hold on to the child God has committed to your hands? That's which where God has placed you. How do you take care of it? Do you allow the death of Jesus to be in vain in your life? Today is another day. God is charging us. The world is coming unto us once again. He has died for your sake. He became sin so that you can become the righteousness of God. He, has, he, he was wounded for your sin, for my sin. How do you respond to the love of Christ for your life? Do you try to nail Jesus on the cross of Calvary the second time? People of God, I encourage you this morning. As you go about your office, as you go about your duty, have the mind of Christ in you. Have the attitude of Christ in you. Let people around you see that Christ has done a great thing in your life. Let it come to a point in your life that you will give all for the sake of Christ. Let it come to a point in your life that you forsake that sin for the sake of Christ. When sin beckons, what do you do? Do you respond to the invitation of sin in your life? Do you accept the invitation of fornication in your life? What do you do? Jesus has paid the price. He has paid the price. And I want to encourage you this morning. What God expects from you is to come to him just as you are without one plea. Come with the attitude of gratitude to God. Come with that repentant heart and seek the face of God once again. Ask for God to overtake your life and direct all your thoughts every day of your life. This is my prayer that henceforth, the Lord will bestow that love upon you. That the death of Jesus will not be in vain in your life. He said, he has taken away your sorrow. He has taken your, your, your struggles away. And that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. I pray that the Lord will heal you from every power that makes it easy for you to commit sin. May the Lord heal you this morning. That thing that makes it easy for you to commit sin with ease. That attitude, that lifestyle that makes you to listen to the dictate of flesh. May the Lord deliver you from that attitude. May the Lord set you free. May the Lord make you whole. May the power of the Lord come upon you mightily. May the grace to run away from sin. May the grace to follow Jesus day by day come upon you mightily and i pray that god will not allow you to follow the path of destruction i pray for you this morning i intentionally pray for those who are listening to the sound of my voice this morning that the lord will hinder you from following the path of destruction may the lord hinder you from following the path of flesh you will always Obey God. You will follow the path of righteousness and you will not end up in hell. That is my prayer for you as you go this morning. And may the Lord guide you. May the Lord uphold you. May the presence of the Lord be active in your life, both now and forevermore. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. I pray for the listeners this morning. 
that as many that are following the path of destruction, Lord, may it please you to draw them back. May your mercy prevail over judgment in their lives. That wherever they find themselves today, O oh God, your light will shine upon them. And every work of darkness shall be exposed. And above all, your name shall be glorified. Thank you, blessed God, for your faithfulness. For in Jesus' most wonderful name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.